Sometimes the enemy of the new move of God is the last move of God, not on God's part, but on the part of the people who learned to host something that God was doing, and now he's doing a new thing, and they're like, yeah, but I thought he did that, you know, so we don't want that because that looks weird. It looks different. But post-COVID, I'm telling you, it's all going to look different. You know, it's, we're, we're, you know, after our son was diagnosed with cancer, we asked the doctors, when will things go back to normal? And, you know, they, they don't like that question because it's a tough one for them to answer. But we basically, they basically said, there is, this is the new normal. There is no, your life will, like, not go back to the way it was. And we had to, we did have to grieve that. However, after going through that five-year trial, it was filled with encouragement from heaven, visitations. My son, Jesus visited my son in the hospital. He's laying there with a mask on his face, no hair on his head. And, uh, oh my goodness, I'm about to, whew, this was tough. A little girl in the next room died. And he said, Dad, I want to go over there and raise her from the dead. He's laying there going through chemotherapy with no hair on his head. He's four and a half. And he says, I want to go over there and pray for her to be raised from the dead. So we tried, but they wouldn't let us in the room. So we laid hands on the wall. I never heard anything. But that night, I remember my son, he woke up the next morning and he said, I woke, I, I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw Jesus. And I was like, what? Like, he saw Jesus. And I said, what did he say? He said he saw like different color rainbows and golden rainbows. And Jesus said to him, everything's going to be okay. I've already healed you. I've healed you. Right? And so in the midst of one of the worst trials, one of the worst testings came that encounter that carried him through. He never even batted an eye. He was never worried. I mean, he went through some stuff, but even the side effects were not near as bad as they could have been. You know, there was just so much grace. And so sometimes maybe it's not, well, I didn't get COVID. I did get it. But maybe God's grace was with you through it in a way that you never imagined. And now you're going to be able to move forward in a way that you weren't able to before. You're going to carry something you didn't necessarily ask for, but now you have the grace to carry it, you know. You know what I'm talking about, Joe? Come on now. Some, some, some of you might be like, you know, I, I just don't understand. In the last season, I, I operated like things seemed simple, and now all of a sudden I feel like the Lord's telling me to do things that I don't feel are really natural to me. That's because God's stretching you. And, and, and you're going to, I'm telling you, the post-COVID glory is going to be greater than the pre-COVID glory. It's going to be like, it's going to be like BC and AD, you know, with the, with it, before COVID, after COVID. <laughs> yeah, BC, AC, before COVID, after COVID, you know. Before COVID, this is, this is how I operated. But after COVID, oh my goodness, God just blew it up. And you might be handed a torch that you don't necessarily, like, wouldn't have asked for. I, I wouldn't have asked to have authority. I mean, I just wouldn't have asked to run with a torch of childhood cancer. I don't want that. I don't want to ask for that. I wouldn't have asked for that, right? Jesus, he said, hey, let, can this cup pass from me? Like, he knew it couldn't, but I think he was just in such agony. He thought, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to tell the Father how I feel right now. I need, you know, let this cup pass from me. But he plowed forward. And for the joy that was set before him, he saw you right in front of him, right? And it was worth it. Whoa, it was worth it to him. He saw you right in front of him. It says in Hebrews, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And so what I'm praying is that tonight and tomorrow night, and even tonight through the night, tomorrow during the day, you're visited. You're visited. And, and, whoa, in your spirit, something fresh comes alive, something new comes alive. I want to share a couple of stories with you of when things like that have happened to me. And I want to stretch you a little bit. I actually felt like the Lord said, teach a little bit about the angelic tonight, which I have not done in years. I mean, I've never really focused on it. But there's so much angelic activity here. I, I feel it. I sense it. And like I told you, I really only knew how to see demons and devils. I would go speak at youth groups, and I would literally line the kids up, and I would just, like, <laughs> scream, and I'd look in their eyes, and I'd just try to find a demon somewhere, you know. And it would scare them. And I remember one day the Lord said to me, you, you can't find me if your life depended on it. And it offended me because I'm like, 
excuse me? I've been preaching the gospel for how many years, right? You get all haughty. And the Lord's like, excuse me, all you see is demons and devils. And, I, and then I'm like, well, you know what? That's all I know how to see. Teach me. But that's the point that we have to come to. Sometimes we just have to say, Lord, teach us. And so um, in 20, I want to say it was 2011, it was so wild. Um, we were living in Alaska. We were missionaries to the First Nations people. There was horrible, like, epidemics of suicide and drug overdoses. And, I mean, it just witch doctors placing curses on all the ministers. And it was just, it was just like one thing after the other. And one night the Lord woke up our son. He was like three at that time, our, our eldest son. And he woke up wide awake in the middle of the night and just started playing with toys. And I, I'd never seen him do that before. And I was like, God, what is going on right now? And so I felt like the Lord said, I woke him up. And I'm like, thanks a lot. Now we're not going to sleep all night. Why'd you do that? You know, I mean, our, our oldest boy, he gave us a run for our money. And now our youngest also gives us a run for the money. You know, we thought we were getting a break there with the last three. We have five now. And um, so I said, why'd you wake him up? And the Lord said, because I want to, I want to, I want to show you who your angels are. And I was like, What? I mean, it was so, it just sounded really weird to me. So I took out a journal. I had like this prayer journal and I'd write down in the prayer journal and what the Lord had me write down and I just felt this impressed into my spirit was that I, I had two major angels that went everywhere with me and he said that one angel was a new wine angel, and I'm, like a new wine, one that brings the fresh thing that God is doing, Okay. Nothing to do with alcohol, but like new wine. Like it says in the book of Amos that the mountains would run with new wine. And then he said that the other angel was a warlord, a warring angel, because of the witchcraft and things that I'd come out of, that that angel went places with me. And we would see crazy, crazy, like, authority over witchcraft, like everywhere that we went. In fact, one of the, thi one of the most memorable happened in Sandusky, Ohio wasn't even, that's not even that far from here. When me and my wife first launched the ministry, we would go into bars and clubs, and we weren't even in churches. In fact, I had a little deal in my heart with the church the Lord had to deal with because uh, of how I grew up. I just wasn't like a fan of church. And now I love the church, but the Lord had to deal with my heart on that. I only wanted to be out there winning the lost, but the church, I was like, eh, no, I'm good. No, I don't need to go in the church, you know. I'll just go win the lost. I'm an evangelist or whatever. So anyway, um, me and my wife ended up getting into a Satanist club in Sandusky, Ohio. How did we do it? I don't remember, but I, we, we met a band who, uh, we told them that we had this um, drama that we did, and they were like, oh, cool, come do the drama during our set, you know? And so our drama was depicting our testimonies. And so my, my, we'd have, like, fake blood and the knives that, like, disappear, and, like, when you stay, like, those fake ones. And then we, and I had, like, this fake satanic altar with a skull. And then we had this big cross that would stay hidden until the end, and then we would lift up this cross. And it said, for you, in red. Like, it looked like blood. We spray painted it. And um, so we got in this club, and there was, it was, it was terrible. There's kids here, so I'm not really going to give a whole lot of detail, but it was, it was sick. It was really nasty. And um, when it came time for us to go up, I, I got up there and we started doing our drama. We lift up the cross and there's a guy staring at me. He's got horns implanted in his head, like in his skull, like two horns in his skull. And his face is covered with 666 tattoos. He's got like cat eye contacts in his eye, right? And, uh, and he's just glaring. He's just glaring. And I remember when we lifted up the cross... And then I said, we're here tonight to pray for you if anybody wants prayer. This guy, he must have been like 350 pounds. He was massive with horns in his head. Can you imagine that? He comes up to me, and I'm thinking, I am going to die. <laughs> I'm going to be a martyr at one of my first ministry events. He comes up to me, and he just starts bawling like a baby. And he said, I want to know Jesus. And he's, his tongue is like split like a snake tongue. And he's saying, I want to know Jesus. One of the most, and so we prayed with him, and he had this radical encounter with Jesus. But just one of the most memorable things happened, you know, in a time where we just really had to step out like that. Um, and so things like that, we would see authority over, like, real darkness, you know, whether it's the darkness of religion or darkness of, of you know, satanic stuff or whatever. Um, 
we would just always see this great authority. And so it made sense to me then because we would see people delivered by joy. Anybody want to be delivered by joy? Come on now. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And it says that he does send ministering angels. They're ministering spirits unto the heirs of salvation in the book of Hebrews. We don't worship them. We don't like, you know, teach about them every single day. But sometimes he's like, hey, I want you to, I want to help you be more aware of what I'm doing. And he does things through ministering spirits. And so for the next few years, I really went on that. I mean, I, I was confident. I felt like I was partnering with my angels. Like, like I understood why witches and warlocks would always be led to our meetings. It's because of that warring angel that has, you know, authority over that stuff. And then I understood why we would see the supernatural laughter and get drunk in the Holy Ghost and see people delivered. People would get healed because they laughed in the service. Like, we didn't pray for them. They would just start laughing and, like, their tumor would shrink or some kind of crazy stuff. Like, some really supernatural. And that was because of this new wine angel that was bringing the new wine. You know? I mean, a lot of stuff in Toronto happened like that. And so I went on that for a few years. But then uh, came this, this really cool thing in 2017. Um, the Lord began to speak to me about Reformation. And I didn't really know what the difference was between revival and reformation. I had been part of the Lakeland revival. I had been to some other corporate revivals. I'd had, ex in fact, my, my first extended revival, uh, corporate extended revival, was in just south of Columbus, Ohio. So again, not that far from here. And God did phenomenal things, uh, you know, and we were pregnant with our first son, so we actually handed it to somebody else because we couldn't, we couldn't stay any longer. We had to go back home to have the baby. Um, but God always did phenomenal things in this region. I just want to encourage you. Um, but anyway, so in 2017, the Lord is speaking to me about reformation. And I realized that revival should lead to reformation. We should, there should be a radical shift in the way that we do things. In fact, I asked the Lord, what is reformation? What does it look like? And I felt like he said, well, we will have reformation when we love the lost enough to dine with them just like I did. Just like Jesus did. That's what he said to me, which was what you do, right? And he said, but also, when, we're, when we love the church enough to challenge the things that do need to change. But see, in order to be in a place like that, we need to, we need to be in revival. So I asked the Lord, well, what's revival? You told me what reformation is. I like to ask the Lord's de definition of things. So I said, so what is revival? And this, this, this one blew me away. He said, when the Holy Spirit can be himself. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit can be himself. Everything is revived when the Holy Spirit is allowed, permitted to be himself. Now, now, he is a gentleman, but sometimes he'll knock you off your horse. Sometimes he will break every religious bone in your body. And no, I don't mean literally, physically, but I mean, he can be, he can be pretty intense. He was with Paul when he was Saul on the road to Damascus. He was with me. If you hear my story in detail... I mean, I was facing the dirt, shaking, crying. I thought God was killing me, and I deserved it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a very intense experience. So in 2017, you know, the Lord visited me in a different way. And here's what I want to say. When the Lord gives you a new message to carry or a new, not that the gospel changes. It's not a new gospel, but a, but a fresh commissioning where you're going to walk in things and, and, and even maybe have words of knowledge when you didn't have words of knowledge before or whatever it might be, Okay. Um, the Lord will visit you in such a way that it will facilitate what you're now going to be carrying. And so in 2017, when the Lord began to speak to me about Reformation, I had a, I had a little vision where I saw a picture of a painting, which was really interesting, of an angel that had these medieval garments on. And he had this instrument that I'd never seen before. And the Lord said, this is an angel of Reformation. And he's been there through the centuries. He was there for the Protestant revival. He was there in the, in the Constantine era. And he's been leading and guiding the church back into the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, uh, in the prophetic and the apostolic and all that stuff. And I was like, man, that's amazing. And then in 2017, after that, I had a, a really interesting encounter. And my wife, I don't know how many of you, how many of you were like Holy Ghost Lushes? Where like the presence of God comes and you're just like, you just melt, right? Nobody. Okay, Northeast, what's going on here? We need a little lushy lush going on here. Thank you, Lord. So, so I, I, I take it, I take it you are. Okay. Anybody else? So, yeah, 
I hear a laugh, so I know there's at least one or one or two, uh, and, and it's always the women. Come on, dudes. I, I'm I am a Holy Ghost lush. My wife, on the other hand, she, of course she loves the presence, but she's very practical and she's very driven and she's very process minded. She balances me out because if it was just me, I'd be drooling drunk on the floor in the Holy Ghost like 12 hours a day and not get anything done. And my wife's like, "Hey, come on, like." Meet your goals. That, actually, again, that book, that, yeah, that, that talks about it. It's really good. So, see, I need that. But um, this one particular day, I was preparing to go preach that night, and this presence of the Lord came in the room, and it felt like rolling waves, and I was just stuck. I, I was like, I'm not even going to be able to get in my car and go drive to where I have to preach. I'm just stuck. It was so intense, and here's how I know it was legit, because my wife walked in, with our new baby, our number four, our little Alva, and she was nursing him, she walks in the room, and she just walks in and goes, whoa, and almost falls with the baby in her arms. And I'm like trying to go catch her, but I can barely move. And she goes, what are you doing in here? And I'm like, I'm not, I was just preparing a message in this, like, I don't know. It almost felt like we were stuck in concrete, you know? And um, anyway, so she sits on the bed, and she just starts I mean, and I don't see her do that very often, but she's just sitting there like, oh, you know. And I'm like, okay, this is glorious right here. I don't know what it is. And then the Lord speaks to me and says, I'm assigning to you for the next season an angel from the Brownsville Revival. I had no idea what the Brownsville Revival was. In fact, at that time, I thought it was Brownsville, Texas. I had no idea it was Brownsville Assembly of God in Pensacola, Florida. I didn't even know that. I didn't know anything about it at all. I never even looked it up. And I was like, what? So I wrote it down. And then I went on YouTube and I started researching the Brownsville Revivals. I had no idea what it was, you know. And so sometimes moves of God are characterized by different things. So like the Lakeland outpouring was characterized as like a healing revival, okay. Um, Brownsville, a holiness revival. Toronto was like a glory renewal. Uh, si unusual signs and wonders, right? So... And I know there's a lot more. But the Brownsville specifically was this, you know, holiness thing. And after I had that encounter, I remember thinking, like, what do I have to do with this? I mean, honestly, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit edgy for, for, for some of the guys that were involved in the Brownsville revival. You know, like, I still have earrings and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an eyebrow ring and a little bit on the edge, you know. Like, how does, how does this go together? But I felt like the Lord was saying, I want to restore holiness to my church, but I don't want it to be a legalistic kind of holiness. This is what you're going to carry. And I was like, prove it. Because I, sometimes I'm just like, am I making this up? Am I crazy? You ever feel like that? When you feel like, God, you, you feel like you think God said something, but you're just not, like, you just want to really make sure. You want to really confirm. That's, that's okay. That's good. And as we mature, it, it gets easier, you know. But I'm like, I, I want to I make sure that I'm just not, like, making this up. And so I was on my way to preach in Texas. The plane lifts off, and the, the pilot, you know, comes over the loudspeaker. <laughs> and welcome aboard. Thank you for flying with us. This is your captain speaking. My name is Captain Steve Hill. Well, Steve Hill was the name of the guy that ran the Brownsville Revival. And that was the name of the captain on the plane, first and last name. I about fell out of my chair. I fell out of my seat on the plane. I'm like, oh, it's God, <laughs> you know. Like, I should have known, but he just, he so graciously confirmed it to me anyway, right? And uh, anyway, but I saw a shift. I saw a shift. When I got to this church in Texas, this guy had just gotten out of a mental institution, and his car breaks down in the church parking lot. And he walks in while I'm preaching. Like, he just walks in out of a mental institution. And I'm preaching on, you know, freedom from sin and, and signs and wonders. And he just runs up to the front. Like, I mean, it was like, okay, I can't make this stuff up. He gets delivered of all these demons, but it wasn't hard. It was like there was just, like, oil on it just, just for that. Like, it was there just for that. And the Lord will do that. He will give you oil like 
in, in your lamp just for a specific thing, or another word would be grace. He will give you a special grace just for that specific thing. In fact, through COVID, he's given you a special grace and special oil for specific things that you had to implement during COVID that you didn't have to, you know, worry about before and, and, um, and so on and so forth. And so I saw this shift where people were like, we want to be free from this and we want to be free from that. And there was like more of a hunger and so I got to, that's where identity comes in. We get to teach, this is who you are in Christ. Those things don't have to identify you anymore. In fact, they don't identify you at all anymore in Christ. This is who you are. You know, I wish, when I came to Jesus, I wish somebody told me that. Because all I heard was, and, and, and God blessed some of the people that helped disciple me. Um, and not all I heard, but I didn't really hear a lot of that. I heard a lot of like, here's what you need to do. You know, make sure you do it good, do it right. The devil's strong, you know, and there, so there was a very, sometimes I would fall into like works and performance, and it took me years to really begin to get a revelation of like my sonship in Christ, and so some of you in here that might be new believers, um, you know, I would really encourage you, talk to your pastors about like identity and sonship and really knowing who you are, and I know that they already probably have that covered, but get books on sonship and identity, you know, and, and really dive into that, because when the Lord visits you, He's going to commission you in different seasons to walk in new things and fresh things. And you're going to need to know who you are. You're going to need to know who you are in that, in that time. So why not right now? Amen? So um, it turns out that once I had this, this Brownsville Revival Angel following me around, some really crazy things started to happen. And the Lord told me, come off the road, focus on church planning. He gave us this vision for our church community. We have an online church, and now we have some different locations. It's called Church 14, and it was out of the book of Acts, which I'll talk about maybe a little bit later. And so we pulled off the road, pulled away from everyone we were working with. We didn't really know why. We just felt like that's what we were supposed to do and, you know, started focusing on church planning. I really wanted to see people discipled in uh, in purity and, and know who they really are in Christ. I wanted them to see that it's a joy. And it was right around that time that we ended up being involved in one of the high, biggest kind of exposures in the charismatic church that I've, that I've ever seen. And it was, it was painful. You know, it was a painful process. It was a painful thing to walk through. And it was some people that we, that we love dearly, you know, but but there was just some crazy things going on. But through that, the Lord perfected in me and, and helped me understand, this is why I assigned this angel to you. This is why I assigned this ministering spirit to you, so that you would have the grace. You know, if I had known what, what, was, what was coming, I'd have been like, no, I'm going to hide under a rock. Um, this is not going to happen. I don't want to be, I don't want to be part of this. You know, we've seen a lot of crazy things in ministry because people are people and we love Jesus, but sometimes we, we do dumb things and sometimes we make bad decisions. Um, and sometimes we hurt other people because we're not healed up in different areas, you know. But the Lord really used that opportunity to perfect His grace and, and His power in our weakness. Um, and it wasn't until just this year, so that was three years ago, this summer when I was down with Patricia at God TV, um, I, had, I had another, a new one, a new visitation. I'm not going to talk all about that right now, but it was, but it was kind of like the Lord was signaling, hey, you've come through what I was preparing you for, and now I'm going to prepare you onto something fresh. And I feel like he's saying that to all of you tonight. I feel like he's saying that. And it may not come through an angelic visitation that you necessarily see or feel a certain way. It doesn't have to. It doesn't need to, you know, follow, as long as they're not preaching some other gospel, <laughs> you know, discern the spirits. But it doesn't have to come a, a certain way or be a certain model. Um, it may just come. You may wake up with this, with this thought, you know. I'll give you an example. There's a person that I used to know years ago, and... Today, when I woke up, I had had a dream about them. And when I posted that I was in Pittsburgh, they lived 10 miles from here. I had no idea. But I just had a dream about them. So see, something like that, by the way, I know you're probably watching, and I hope you come tomorrow night. But see, something like that tells me, I mean, I can't make that kind of stuff up. 
I know that God is wanting to do something with this person and infuse them with a fresh torch to carry and, and maybe do whatever he wants to do. But I know he's trying to do something. I know that he's hungry to touch that person. So I know he's hungry to, to do the same thing with you guys. And I just want to encourage you, you know, when we were saved, we weren't just saved from. A lot of times we focus on what we were just saved from, like we were saved from destruction and saved from death or saved from suicide. Or Listen, I was saved from all that. I was saved from suicide. Uh, I had two attempts. I was saved from drug addiction, from alcoholism, from witchcraft, from same-sex attraction. If I could just say that, I was delivered from it, okay? But sometimes we focus on what we were, you know, saved from and forget that we're saved unto something, though, too, so when the Lord comes and visits us and gives us fresh commissionings, we have to remember that it's not, to, it's, it's not just, oh, you know, I just got to get people saved from stuff. That's part of it, but we want to we see the full identity. We want them to know that they're saved unto something as well. So I just want you to keep this in mind. When the Lord gives you a fresh uh, torch to run with, don't just make it about, I, gotta, I just got to get people out of the darkness. That's part of it, but now we want to... We want them to understand that they're saved unto the light for certain, for very specific reasonings and purposes. I remember I was uh, looking earlier during worship, the Lord gave me 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9, and it says this, He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace that was given to us in Christ before the world began. That's crazy if you think about that before the world began. But it says, He saved us and called us unto a holy calling. Some versions say, He saved us and set us apart unto a special, you know, call. But however you slice it, you're saved from the destruction of sin and death, but you're saved unto a holy calling. We forget about the holy calling and the Lord will have ministering spirits visit you. He'll give you dreams. He'll give you visions to keep your eyes on that holy calling that you live out of who you really are in Christ. And I feel like what he wants to do tonight is he just wants to, to, to do that. He wants to bring fresh torches and um, fresh commissionings. And he wants to confirm in your heart. Some of you, in fact, I feel like there's somebody in here. And you, during COVID, you took it as a time to maybe write songs or poetry or something along those lines and you've been saying you know God I don't know about this I need you to confirm this before I come out with it and I feel like the Lord wants to come and confirm what what he had you doing during COVID and say yes this is the time you know don't be don't hold back in fear this is the time maybe some of you during COVID you had this sudden thought and you're like I want to pursue a change of, of career. Like it just came. Well, if there's peace in it, you know, sink into that rest and see what God will do. Ask Him to confirm it. You know, and we can do that tonight too. We can ask Him to confirm it. Um, whoa. Thank you, Jesus. And whoa, thank you, Lord. Father, we, right now, Lord, we just thank you that this atmosphere is stirred. Lord, we thank you the heavens are open because of Jesus. Lord, we thank you uh, right now, if there's any pain, okay, uh, somebody on, like on one side of your head, I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's a blockage or if it's a, I don't know what it is, uh, maybe a migraine like on one side that you always get, but I just see the Lord releasing you from that right now. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I also saw a picture of like a mouse trap, and it's like there's somebody in here and you, you're like, you know it's a trap and you don't know why you keep sticking your hand in it, but you just do, and the Lord just wants to free you. This is not a condemnation thing and I'm not gonna call you out, so if it's you, just receive it. But I feel like the Lord wants to free you from always hurting yourself. When you know, like you know it's a trap, but you just, for some reason, you just keep sticking your hand in it. And the Lord's saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour out grace to you tonight that you would not continuously hurt yourself. Because it hurts him, it, it hurts his heart to see you hurt yourself. You see what I'm saying? 
Whoa, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. And Father, I just thank you for a realm of signs and wonders tonight. Oh, wow. Lord, I thank oh, Lord, I thank you for a realm of glory and signs and wonder, wonders tonight. Some of you, some of you, at least one or two of you, I think, through the COVID thing, and maybe it's somebody watching online, I don't know, but um, through the COVID thing, you you began to suffer really bad fatigue, you just like not like before. You just begin to suffer fatigue like not before, and and I just saw the Lord infusing you with supernatural energy, ginseng straight from heaven. Zap, 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 zap. Lord, I thank you that you're here just zapping your people in a good way. And we should welcome his judgments because when his judgment shows up, he sets things right. He sets things straight. He, he's a righteous judge. Amen? And so if there's, if there's places in our lives where we're, where we're just like failing miserably, maybe we're trying in our own power. Maybe it's something we just need to surrender to him. He's going to come and he's going to, he will, he will cast a judgment, but he's a righteous judge. He'll make it right. He'll set it straight. He'll reconcile. He'll restore you in that area. You know, the word in the Greek is crisis. The same word, crisis in the Greek, K-R-I-S-I-S, transliterated. There's a lot of words for judgment, but the main one for the righteous judge is there's a crisis. There suddenly needs to be a new judgment made a new decision to be able to set things straight and that's what the lord is he's using he didn't i don't believe it came from him but he works everything together for the good so he's going to use covid for the good to set things right and straight in areas that that maybe they weren't before i know for me he used covid to get me alone with him for six months a lot of glory on that not that I didn't want to be alone with him before, I just had no choice. I couldn't get distracted by a bunch of other stuff. In fact, where we live in Arizona right now, we can't even get internet because we're so far out in the desert. So I've had a lot of Jesus time with no internet. And it's been kind of cool. My kids are mad. <laughs> but it's been kind of cool. Whew. Anything that we're at that... Oh my gosh, thank you, Lord. Anything that we're just, that we're even relying on? Oh, whoa. Maybe you've been depending on, on pills. Not even anything illegal, just pills. Like every day, just to numb pain or whatever it is. Father, I thank you right now that your power to destroy the yokes of bondage is here. And Lord, that you set everything straight. You set everything right. And Lord, everything that the enemy has come to try to steal and kill and destroy, you've come to give us life and life abundantly. And Lord, we bless this work. We bless this church. I thank you that it's been blessed abundantly through the COVID season. And Lord, we declare that it will only be more and more and more blessed. It will be more and more and more blessed. Lord, and there will be such uh, overflowing provision there will be such abundance that the pastors and the leaders at some point are going to think should we say like Moses don't bring anymore we don't even know what to do with this I think it might have already been at that point a couple times come on Jesus that is that's the overflow of heaven right there that's the overflow hey of heaven right there